river or lake. Next, please. Yes. Um, moving rightward, we see the round like row of distant hills and the solitary angler in his boat. He is nicely located a short distance from the shore, where the water is deep enough for fishing. Next, please. A close-up of the man in his boat. A simple shelter behind him. He sits hunched over and concentrates on his quiet occupation. A few ripples around the boat help to define the water surface. Next, please. We are, of course, reminded of the famous solitary angler painting in Japan, attributed to Maoyuan, another that we will see in the Maoyuan lecture. And there are real resemblances. Both are details from larger compositions, in fact. The Maoyuan attributed painting is really a fragment rescued from a much larger hanging scroll. The heavy horizontal cracking reveals that. But the re resemblance is not without significance. The Liaoning painting is best understood, then, as a fine, small work by some Litong follower working around the early period of Maoyuan, that is, sometime in the late 12th century. It could even be an early work by Maoyuan himself, but that's only a guess based on style. In any case, it helps to provide a smooth transition from the Li Tong to the Ma Yuan style of landscape. This is, uh, um, this is continuing with the following of Li Tong, but a very different kind of painting. This is a painting, the first part of a hand scroll, uh, in the uh, well, late 12th century work by an artist named Wu Yuan Zhe. Wu Yuan Zhe. Jin Dynasty, this is done on the north. I should say immediately that um, the tradition of Li, of uh, Su Shi, Su Dong Po, and Mi Fu, and so on, the literati tradition was carried on more in the north under the Jin Dynasty by that is by Han Chinese living under the Jurchuns uh, than it was in the south. There was not much of that kind of literati painting done, as far as we know, in the south in the southern Shun Court in Hangzhou. But in the north, there's quite a lot of it. I'll show a few examples, maybe in the last lecture. Well, this is a hand scroll representing the Red Cliff. It's in the Chinese Art Treasures exhibition. Siren has it, and so forth. The attribution is actually made by Zhuang Yan, or Zhuang Shang Yan, this quite wonderful uh, calligrapher, scholar, great guy. Uh, I, I, he was in a group shop photo that I showed in the first lecture. He was the director of the Palace Museum and the 1950s when I first went there, and uh, a major calligrapher and a major scholar. And he discovered that the copy of the, the calligraphy writing of the Red Cliff Ode by Su Dong Po, which follows the painting, to which this painting is in fact a kind of frontispiece, he discovered that in a recording, uh, recorded and managed to identify the scroll, which previously had been attributed to an early Sung artist, a nonsense attribution, and he found that it was really by this artist Wu Yuan Zhe, a little known, uh, somewhat scholar painter actually. At any rate, uh, it's a painting that represents the Red Cliff Ode, but uh, is somewhat in the Li Tong tradition. Here's the first part of it, and uh, it's an easy entrance with a lot of space, and then a river shore coming into the foreground, and then here the second part. <clears throat> here we see the Great Cliff towering above the river, and then receding up to the left, and then another foreground uh, um, landmass with pine trees growing on it. And on the river uh, here, d detail, here is the uh, Su Dong Po, Su Shi and his two friends, table in front of them with their things to eat and drink. You remember we saw, we saw a, um, um, a long painting of this by uh, an artist named Chao Zheng Chang, uh, which was a 12th century painting, uh, showing all the sections of the row, uh, illustrating all the sections of the poem, the prose poem. This only shows the climactic moment. Most Red Cliff pictures we have, and I'll show others, uh, we'll see several more, uh, simply show this one scene in which uh, Su Dong Po and his friends are going past the river. Anyway, here they are, and then up above, we see the uh, the cliff face. This is, strange as it may seem, it's a kind of uh, graphic reduction, reduction into graphic brushstrokes, that is, uh, and more the, more for the amateur artist, more calligraphic, more brushstrokey, 
uh, of the Li Tong Manor, this uh, vertical thing and the and the diagonal recessions and so on. Well, if if you if you make the comparisons, you'll you'll see this for yourself. It is actually the Li Tong Manor as carried on in the north and as turned to the needs of the scholar amateur. <clears throat> and here down below is the uh, and the lower left is the swirling water around the rocks and the pines being blown by the wind. Quite a wonderful, wonderful picture. Now, I think I'll stop here and then go on later with, uh, with paintings with political content. Okay, so much for this, this one. We'll stop here.